So for those of you who have watched the Beast of No Nation uh, movie, I'm sure that this young man will be one that you know very well because he was one of the stars from Beast of No Nation. The only young star who didn't speak in that movie made a lot of impression on a lot of people. He was one of the characters that people fell in love with, Striker from Beast of No Nation. And uh, we have followed some stories about him in uh, last year, for, for example, when uh, there was a report that he was seen on the streets and uh, he was begging for aid and then we asked what was happening whether he wasn't paid by the the producers of Beast of No Nation we got some conversation that uh, he had been paid the money was in the bank and he had became 18 just last year so he was yet to be given access to his account this is uh, a year after I'm sure he's 19 now uh, we are hearing a different story that you know there's no money in that account how did we get here What's up with Stryker? He has a story to tell us. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so, um, how have you been? Nothing better. Nothing better. Are you still on the streets? Somehow. Somehow you're still on the streets. Um, we heard that you were paid a very good uh, sum of money when you acted in uh, Beast of No Nation. Oh, yes. I went. We went to the bank with Zuri and Kofi Rabbit. And when we went to the bank, they told me that the money is from America to Ghana. And I said, okay. They said they will transfer it to the Barclays Bank to me. So today we went to the Barclays Bank to check whether the money is there or not. And they told me my, my name is not part of their register. So and your I name is know. not in their books. Yeah. Now let's start from how this happened. When you featured in Beast of No Nation, um, who took you on that set? Zuri. Who is Zuri? Zuri is in America, a white woman. Okay, she took you on that set. They picked you from, what did they pick you from again? Konkoba. Konkoba Market. Yeah. And then they took you on that set. Yeah. And so Zoe facilitated the payments into your account or? Yeah, it was Zoe. It was Zoe. Yeah. How much did they tell you they were going to pay you? Actually, when we were shooting Beast of Knowledge, they didn't tell us anything that they were going to pay us or something. By later on, before we realized that, you know, they said they would put some $30,000 in our account. And we said, okay. So you were told that you were going to receive $30,000. US dollars. Yeah. And you were told by Zoe. Yeah. She took you to the bank yeah. and said that the money had been sent, transferred yes. from the United States yeah. into your account. And she told you there was $30,000. US dollars. You went with her to the Barclays Bank. You saw the documents. Yes. And after, after that, they said you were not 18 at that time. Was that when they said you were not 18 at that time? And so yes, you couldn't yes, have access yes, to them. Yes, so yes. they opened the, bank, uh, the account for you. Yes. Who did that? Kofi Robert with Zuri. Who is Kofi Robert? Kofi Robert stayed as North Kaneshi, but I don't really know his house mm. very well. Mm. He says that North Kaneshi, you don't know his house. How related are you to him? How, why did he join Zoe to take you to the bank? Um, before Zoe would come to Ghana, it was Kofi Robert who leads Zoe to Ghana. That's why everything went to Kofi Roberts' side. Did Kofi Roberts play a role in Beast of No Nation? No, he was not even on set with us. Mm. He's just a friend of uh, Zoe. So that when Zoe came to Ghana, he's just the one who leads Zoe to the toy and all those stars. And uh, you say that you went to the bank today and they said they don't have any accounts of you. Yes. Okay. So what happened was that last year, I remember when I, well, last year that a journalist uh, from, I think the EIB network saw you on the streets, wrote an article that you were on the streets begging for arms. And uh, we heard that story. And then we called, at that time we heard that uh, Marco, you know Marco? Yeah. He wasn't, he's not the one handling you? No, 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 right now. I'm lonely, I don't have any manager to manage me. So at a certain point, Marco was managing you? Yeah. As of last year, was he your manager? Yeah. Did he know about this money in the bank? Yeah. And he has also seen, he can testify that he saw the money? Mm, Marco didn't see the money, actually. It was, everything was Kofi Rabbit and Sam. Mm. And Sam knows everything about the money. And even Sam went out, went to the bank to take some of the money to buy a car, and right now the car even I bought, I don't see any profit there. So who, who took you to the bank to withdraw money to buy uh, the car? Kofi Robert and Sam. Kofi Robert and Sam. Who is Sam? Sam is a man who was part of Beast of No Nation, mm. the father of Abraham. Okay. 
So um, I think I know this young man. I've done an interview with Sam before. Uh, at that time, uh, you were, were you at a certain time staying with Sam? Was it supposed yes, to be your yes. guidance or something? Yes, Sam was my guide, yeah. Mm. And what happened? And Sam bring the plan that we should go and buy a car so that the car would work for me, so that I would, I would just have some little money so that I would take care of myself. But I still, I, I'm still there. I don't see anything. So you went with Sam to the bank and Kofi yes, Robert to yes. the bank. And then when you went to the bank, which, which, which year was this? That's last year. Last year. At yeah. what time? Do you remember the months last year? No. You don't remember the months last year, but it was last year yeah. and you went with them. When you went to the bank, what, what did you say to the bankers before they gave you money? No, I didn't say anything. When we went there, me, Sam, we just sat down. Then Kofi Rabbit went inside and brought the money that there is the money. Mm. That's all because I didn't sign anything before Kofi Rabbit brought the money. So it means that you are not a signatory to the account. Yes, you don't yes. have to sign anything. No. And the account was not uh, uh, opened in your name. Yes. Which, which bank are we talking about? Barclays Bank. Barclays the, Bank. The one is in Osu. In Osu. Yeah. And they said they don't have any records of you. No, no. They said they don't have anything. So let's go back to when you went to the bank with Kofi Robert and Sam. And then the, Sam, Kofi Robert went in there, brought the money. He told you that this money is from your account. That's what he told you? Yes. And that was how much? No, almost 40,000. 40,000 Ghana cities. Yes. The money you were sent, you were told that was transferred to you from uh, US was 30,000 US dollars. No, the one we went to, remove, went to withdraw mm. to buy the car, mm. we withdrew almost 40,000. Almost 40,000 yes. Ghana cities. Yes. For what? For a Uber or taxi. So who's going to, are you the one, are you the one driving it or who's going to drive it and how do you, how do they? They said they would look for a driver so that the driver would drive it so that every month my money will be given to me. Mm. I still, I don't see anything. Did like you see that. the car? Did they buy the car? Did they take you to buy the car? No, they didn't take me. So after you left the banking hall with them on that day when they said they had going to take your money, have you seen them till date? No, no. I haven't seen anybody. Some used to call me sometimes. He doesn't call me. And me too, I don't really... So when he calls you, what does he say to you? He would, he would tell me that the, the car had an accident or whatever. He would just form a, a key and give it to me. And me too, I don't have not seen it. So I would So you never like saw the car no, when they no, bought no, it? No. And Sam tells you that when you call him, he tells you that the car had an accident. Yeah. And so uh, the rest of the money, 40,000 Ghana is what you took. So it means that you still have some money in the bank. Yeah. Uh, what happened to that one? And that one, I went to the bank today, and they told me that there is nothing there. They said they didn't put my name inside it. They are list. And I was like, no, I don't believe this. Okay, so I remember that last year when we had a conversation with uh, Malhu, who seemed to be your manager at that time. He talked about the fact that one, and I remember very well, he said that um, what it is that they tried to put you in school in Cape Coast. And yeah. then you left the school, and then that's how come maybe you're on the street that they were even looking for you at that time. That was true. Yeah. You left the school in Cape Coast yeah. because you said you didn't want to go to school. And then he said to me that they were going to look for um, some work for you to do, maybe find some job trade for you to learn and all that. Did that happen? Did they put you into any, any um, did they get you any trade to learn? Did you go learning anything beyond school after you left Cape Coast and um, came to Accra? Mauko told me that. I should go to my family house in North Kanishi. We just went, we just went there. Then Mauko just left me in the house. Mm. Then came, he went to his office. From that time, my grandma used to tell me that I should call my manager to him. And I, I would call Mauko or Sam. And they would just tell me that I should tell my grandma that. Sam would tell me that I should tell my grandma that. Is, it's not there. It has go, it's outside or whatever. But me too, I, because Sam have looked um, after me before, mm. so I don't, you know, sometimes I used to lie to my grandma sometimes, and sometimes I used to tell me the truth. And my grandma used to, like, why, why didn't you want to tell me the truth? I'm your... Grandmother. Mm -hmm. mm. And in all the processes, they never involved your grandmother, so your grandmother also doesn't know about this money? No. 
she doesn't know that you have some money in the bank that uh, Netflix paid you. No. She doesn't know. So uh, Malco knew about this money. He said to me in that interview we had on Hits FM last year that you were not 18 at that time. And then a few months, I think when we had the interview, he said you had become 18 and so they were going to give you access. How, did they ever take you to the bank to say, now you are 18, sign these documents, this account is for you, blah, blah, blah? No, no, they didn't do anything like that. No. They didn't do anything like that. No. In the initial stages where you were told that Netflix had transferred the money for, to you or into their account, did they, were you, did they tell you that, okay, this is an account we've opened for you, blah, 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 this is account details, this is an account number, blah, blah, blah. Did they tell you that? No. They just told you that some money had come? Yeah. And now that you went to the bank and then you saw that there was nothing, did you call Malco to tell him that there's nothing in the bank? Because he kept insisting that the money had been placed into some uh, treasury or something like that for you, so that after some years, you would, when you're 18, which was last year, you would be able to have access. Have you called Malco? Um, I don't have Malco's number. That I shall call Malco. But you said you used to speak to him? Yeah, on behalf of Sam. Okay, Sam will call him. Yeah. So you never spoke to Marco by no, yourself? No. You've never spoken to Marco. You don't know Marco's phone number. So Sam was the one who was yeah. calling Marco for you. And, and now, when you went to the bank, did you call Sam then? No, I didn't call anyone before. Because I was, I was like, I was going to check my bank, uh, my, yeah. Mm. I was going to check the rest of the money. But when I went, it was like, no, they, they can't find my name in the list and all this stuff. I was like, oh, no. Because this thing, I need to go to a radio station, a TV station to announce this thing. Hmm. What, what do you suspect might have happened? Did the bank tell you that at a certain point in time, you used to have a record in your name? Or they said they cannot find your name at all in there? Yeah, some, some of them were saying that they've seen me there before, withdrawing money and all those stuff. They've but seen you withdrawing money? Yeah, me and Kofi. Because if I'm not there, Kofi Rabbit cannot withdraw money. And if Kofi Rabbit is not there, I also cannot withdraw money. Because it's a two combined signature. Mm. But you just told me a few minutes ago that they didn't allow you to sign when Kofi was going to withdraw the money. No, because Kofi was going to withdraw the money. I didn't sign. Before the money came to Ghana, mm -hmm. that I signed that we are going to keep it in this bank. Okay, so it means that when they were opening the account, yes. you were there yeah. and you signed yeah. as a sign, you became a signatory to the account. Yes. But at you were not 18. No. And so he was supposed to be have custody yes, yes. over your account yes. and then operate it for you until you're 18. But when you became 18 and they were going to withdraw this money for the car, no, you I, didn't... I didn't sign anything. I didn't sign anything. I was there with Sam. If Sam will remember, I was there with him. And Kofi Rabbit went inside and just came back with them, uh, 40, 000, with almost 40,000. Did you see the money? Yeah, I saw the money. How did you know that it was 40,000? Or he just told you it was 40,000, you Some believe him? Some told me it was almost 40,000. And I, 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 I can't do anything. I have to believe it like that. So could it have been that they withdrew all your money? Yeah. Yeah. Because when I have one there, they say there is, there is nothing there. That's what I would think. Could he have, so they said there's nothing in... So is there an account with your name at Barclays? Yes. The, your account is still valid, yes. but there's no money in the account. Yes. That's what you were told. Mm -hmm. Did they tell they, you they, when? They, they said they, they, they can't see anything. They can't see my name. They can't search my name. My name is not part of the whatever, whatever. They say your name is not in the system. Yes. So how, who did they open the account? In whose name did they open the accounts then? It was me and Kufi Robert. Wow, but this is strange. If you've been able to open, uh, operate, and go do some uh, um, uh, withdrawal, then how come they cannot find your name in that bank? Is it the me, same bank you went to, the same yes, branch? Yes, yes, yes. For me, I don't know whether maybe Kofi Rabbit have, have changed it, have changed the name we used or what. I mean, I don't know. Because I've, I've not been there with him. Maybe Kofi Rabbit is going there. Unless maybe a call. Hmm. When was the last time you spoke to Kobe Sam? Kobe Sam was la, the, the July. This is July. Mm -hmm. We just got into July. Yeah. So you spoke to him this month. Yeah. And what did he say to you when you spoke to him this month? 
Um, I, I was sleep when the place I am. Mm. I sleep in a game center mm. where we all we play game and all those stuffs. That's what I. That's where I sleep. With all the money you had, you still left you to sleep in the game center. Yes. They couldn't rent a place for you. And I told some about those things. That's the time some also told me that my car have had, a, have had an accident. So the money, they are going to use that money that I used to rent the room. They are going to use that money to repair the car. And you have a lot of money. It's $30,000. They could still have repaired your car and still rent a place for you. No, because right now, Kofi Rabbit doesn't want me to come, like, worry him to, for money. That's why he told me that I should, go and, I should go and buy the car so that that car will work for me, so that I will use that car to rent and all those stuff. But still, I've, I've bought the car and all those stuff, but still, I, I But beyond that, that, you still have money in the bank, because if you are giving 30,000 yes. US dollars, it yes. means that you still have money in yes. the bank. But because I went there today and they told me that my, my, uh, my, this one, my information is not there, that's what I'm wondering, that's why. I why did Mali stop managing you? Because we could have called Mali because he confirmed that you had some money. Why did he stop managing you? Um, with Malko, me, I don't I'm know. Malko, sorry. I don't know what I've done to Malko. I went to the office one, one time, and he called me that I should come to his main office. I went there and said that. Even when they screw that, said that they, they stopped managing me. And I've, I've, I've sent a, big, a lot of big, big men there to beg for me so that he will still manage me. But I still, I see that, no, he said, you can't do anything about it. But at that time, did he talk about your money? Did he, did he say anything that, okay, now your money has, you're 18 years, so now this, are, this is your account, blah, blah, blah. Did he know anything about this account? Did Marco know? Because he spoke about it. He spoke as though he knew that there was a bank account in your name at a certain bank. Marco, before we were, we were going to create a bank account, Marco was not there. Mm. Marco was wondering why they didn't call him rather before they went to go to Rabbit to have my assets, my money. So Marco was wondering why. And Zoe explained everything to Marco that this and this, that he doesn't know that he's going to manage me and all those stuff. That's why he returned everything to Kofi Rabbit. So Marco came in, but still Coffee Rabbit took everything yeah. that was it. So Marco never got custody of your account details. No. Nothing was transferred to Marco. No. Wow. So what do you intend to do now? Um, what I'll do is... I'm going to tell my family members that this, um, this that what, um, I went to the bank and they were, they were like... And your family member is just your grandmother? She's the only one or you have other family members? I have a lot. My uncle and all the stuff are there. Mm. They would rather do also help me to get everything. So how are you going to go about it? Mm, maybe I'll send... I'll make sure the police people just go there. Do you know where they live? Do you know where um, Kofi Rabbit... Yeah, and I know some sauce. And Kofi Rabbit have already told me that if I want to, look, if I want to see him, if I see some I'll see him, so definitely I know Sam's house. So, but you said that you haven't, after the bank, he didn't call Sam to find out? No, no, no. Because you think that he doesn't know anything about it. Yeah. It's only Kofi Rabbit yeah. that knows. And you don't have Kofi Rabbit's number? No. And he said you can only reach him through, uh, through Sam. Through Sam. So are you going to call Sam and tell him this what has happened? Yeah. Do you want us to call Sam right now and yes, see? Yes, yes. Um, so, let me, do you have his number? So we're going to call him right on camera. And then I hear you speak to him so that we can record what he says. Are you okay with that? Okay. So if you have the number, um, give I it to me. It. You don't have it here. Because me, self, I'm, I'm not using phone and all these stuff. So how do you call him? My, my, my senior brother. So why have you written the number? Where is, where is the number? Have you written it on a paper somewhere? Oh, how do you get one, to call him? That one is in the house. The in number the is in paper. the house on the yeah. paper. Let me track and see if I have. I think at a certain point in time, I spoke to him. And I have um, Kobna Sam. Let me see. I don't have it again. Uh, let me check. Because at a certain time, we had an interview with him uh, when he played a brand. When the movie was that fresh, 
We did an interview with him after he played Ebra Mata's father. I'm trying to see whether I still have the number. If I don't have it, then... But I have Marco's number. Do you want us to call Marco? Do, do you want me to call Marco? Yeah. I should call Marco. Okay, so I'm going to try to call Marco in your presence and see if he's going to pick up and then we get to hear what he has to say. Okay, hello. Uh, Marco, good afternoon. Uh, My name is Ms. G. I work with the multimedia group. I hope you are well, boss. Sorry? I hope you are well, boss. Yes, please, thank you. I'm very well, thank you. So, um, um, there's a conversation I want us to have. I think we've had this conversation somewhere last year, but the conversation has popped up again, and your name pops up in the conversation. So I would like to have some clarity from you. It's still about striker. You remember that I called you on Hit FM last year. We spoke about him being on the street and all that. Your name again, please. My name is Miss G. What? Miss G. Okay. Yes. Um, I, I know that now you don't manage striker anymore, do you? No, I you don't. But I remember also that when we had that conversation on Hits FM, you told me about a certain account that had some money for him and that was waiting for him to be 18 and then you had said that he turned 18 a few months ago and so now he has access to the account. Yes. Okay, so um, fast forward to 2019, he tells us that he's been to the bank and the bank says they don't have any details of him there. No account in his name and all that. I don't know about that. Well, but you said on radio, we have you on record to have said that there was an account. That's what I'm asking yes, you. But I'm saying that I don't know about him going to the bank and there's no, there's nothing for him. He has been to the bank several times. Yes, he said that a certain Kofi Rabbit went with him to do some withdrawal of 40,000, almost 40,000, to buy him a car which for, was supposed to be for Uber. It didn't happen. And they told him that Uber had got an accident. Then he went to the bank again because he slept in a game house and wanted to go withdraw some money for himself. And they said there's no, the, the Barclays Bank in Osu tell him that there's no detail of him in their system. Well, unfortunately, I don't know about that. I don't, about, I don't know about him going to the bank and there's no detail of him. Okay, but you're very sure that he has details at the bank? But he confirmed to you that they went to make a withdrawal. He confirmed to you. Yes, yeah, because I'm, I'm surprised that the bank could say that he they don't find they haven't found his name. What I'm what, what I'm surprised about, or what I want to find out from you is whether this account was open in his name or it was yes. in somebody else's name. In his name. In his name. Yes. And he had been. He's a signatory to the account. I don't think it's a signature to the account. So it means that this Kofi Rabbit guy, do you know him? Yes, I know him. So it means that Kofi Rabbit is a, is, has a, the right to the account. He has well, he owns the signature or however they put it to the account. Yes. How can you help us in this matter, Marco? Because your name keeps popping up. And when we Google on the internet, you are the one who is talking to on this matter. Is there a way you can help this young man? At least for us to unravel the truth about this account, because we will be checking out from the Barclays Bank about this issue. But is there a way you can also come in to help us with this Kofi Rabbits? And, and then he mentioned Kabina Sam as well, as the one who aided Kofi Rabbits, because he has access to only Kabina Sam, but he doesn't have access to Kofi Rabbits. Mm. Could, you, could you also be that the bank didn't want to deal with him directly because I honestly, I honestly don't have an answer to that. I don't know because me, I don't, I, I, I don't know about it. So I would have to follow up and see what the situation is. Okay, when can we call back for feedback? Or if you can give us access to these people, if you have their contacts and you can share with us so that we follow with them directly and not bother you. Okay, yeah, I'll talk to them and then if you are okay that I give their number out, I'll do that. Please do because we already have a recording of uh, um, Striker because we want to be sure of what we are putting out there. We'll be grateful if you can assist. I'll talk to them and if they are okay. But I'll also find out about the bank station because I don't... Uh, 
I'm not supposed to be so, so I'll find out about it too. All right, thank you very much, Malcolm. But did he say who he went to the bank with? He said the last time he went to the bank, or today, uh, are you talking about today or the last time he went to the bank? The last time he went to the bank. He said the last time he went to the bank was today, and they told him there was not, no, not, nothing in his name yesterday. He went with his, he went with his passport. Um, he didn't go with any document. Did you go with anything? He didn't go with any documents. And so he's supposed to go there with a document and based on that. I mean, I'm just saying what I know. Mm. I'm not saying what is supposed to so, happen. Okay. But I think that he's supposed to go there with a document. And then based on that, um, they will check. They will check. I don't, yeah, mm. I don't know that because I, I assume that's what's supposed to happen. Because even if you are going to... Well, I don't know. Okay. Don't okay. But let me ask one final question. But you managed him for close to a year, but he w he didn't have a place to lay his head. And but he had money oh, in the account. That's not true. That's not true. Okay. He said he lives in a game house. Well, since he went to his family, but when he was with us, he can confirm that he was living in an apartment. Oh, but when and he so moved... His family came, mm -hmm. and so his family came into the picture. He was doing fine. Yeah, as, as, after the family came there, we, just, we went, we took him to his family, so I don't know, I, the clinic at the gay center, I don't know about it. And there was never a complaint that he wanted a, a place to lay his head to you? No, there was actually, when he said he wasn't, he wasn't going to go to school, mm -hmm. I mean, there was plans even to get him a place before his family thing came into the picture, so all those things. I think, I don't know where they went to, but... but he said he's asked people to come and beg you several times to remanage him, but you've refused. He's asked who? He's asked people to come and beg you to remanage him. He said he brought some big men to your place. He's never done that? Oh, <laughs> Which big men? So he's not done that? People who came to me wanted to manage him, so... And I said, the, best, the, 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 the very best person to go to is his family. If you mm. want to work with him, I'm not in charge of him, so you have to go to his family. Mm. So yeah, because I'm not, I'm not in charge of his, of his life. Because once we took, we took him back to his family. His family is now responsible for him. So he won't work with him. His family. Marco, would you would you want him to come back? Would you want to manage him? Because you promised that on radio that you're going to get him to learn a trade and all that. I think you had very good ideas and a, a vision for him. Would you want to take him back? The family, is still, the family is in the picture. But they are not his managers. They can they can. He wants you back. He wants you back. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Because this, this, this thing is way overdue. You know, we've spoken about it last year. He's repeating himself. He doesn't seem to know his, his left from right. So you are a talent manager. And you've been, I think he was okay when he was being taken care of by you. Right now, I don't know because I don't know how far he has gone with anything. So I can't just I can't say yes. And, and, okay. and, I show you, sorry, and I'll show you that I'm going to start managing again. I can't, I can't do that. But I don't know. I don't know him now. Mm. Uh, yeah. but, but we'll call back for the details of the other people whilst no you think problem. through whilst you think no through problem. helping the situation and we'll see how no that problem. goes. Thank you very no much, Malcolm. You're welcome. So that's uh Malcolm, your former manager. Uh he said he's surprised. He said you were supposed to go to the bank with the documents. And so if he had gone to the bank with the documents, maybe they would have been able to trace your account. But he's, he's not sure that you don't have an account there. He says he's surprised that you say, or the bank told you that you don't have an account yeah, there. Yeah, that's what the bank said. You did, did you go with any document? So tell me what happened when you went to the bank. How did, it, how did it play out? So you went to the counter, and then you said, I want to withdraw, or what did you no, say? No, no, I didn't. We didn't went there to withdraw. We just went there to check my balance. So did you go to the counter, or you spoke to somebody in the bank? No, I, well, I went to the counter mm. to check my balance. So you wrote your account details. Do you have your account details with you? No. So what did you do? You just wrote your name, Emmanuel, uh, what, Kwe, or what was Emmanuel it? Emmanuel Nia Dum Kwe. Nia Dum and then your date of birth. And then you said, I have an account here. And then the person, did, she, did you see them entering anything into the system? Mm-hmm. She entered your name? Yeah. And then she and said... And even the first one was like, ah, you've been here before and I've done it for you before. So why right now? Why this is happening? So it looks like... Your name has been entirely wiped from their system. Yeah. Because if somebody has done it for you before, it means that you have records with them. Yes.
And do you, do you know the name of this person who told you that uh, you've been here before and I've done it before? Did you see that? Can you, can you tell the person when you see them? Do you know that? Do you check their badge to see their name? No, no. You didn't ask for their name? Wow. So what's going to happen is that, um, like Marco has indicated, he's going to try to get us to Kabina Sam and then Kofi Rabbit. Unfortunately, fortunately for you, he says he knows these two. So he's going to get them. I'm going to wait to hear from him to, for the details. I'm going to take your number as well. And then we're going to, maybe with you another day, invite you over, go with you to Barclays Bank. Okay. And see what is happening there. I have to, we have to really plan it. If they don't give us response, we go with you to Barclays Bank. And then we'll see what's happening. Next time when we are going, take, he said you have to take your passport. You have a passport? Yeah. So take your passport with you because he said you have to take your passport. At least we had that on record. Okay. So take your passport with you and let's go to Barclays Bank uh, very soon. I wait for them for 24 hours. If I get any response, fine. If I don't get any response within 24 hours, we'll go to Barclays Bank with you. And then we'll go see what happens there. Let's talk about the update when it comes to Stryker's story. You okay. know that yesterday I told you that he had uh, alleged that his mm -hmm. handlers uh, may have duped him. Right. Um, the police invited one of the suspects, whose name is uh, Kofi Roberts, okay. and uh, he wrote a statement today. And he was advised to go print or get a detailed statement of what has been used so far, because according to him, the money is just about thirty-eight thousand cities left in Stryker's account. Wow. And so they need a detailed statement as to how that money was spent over the period mm -hmm. uh, that he held the accounting but trust. But has it been confirmed that him? Stryker uh, was owed uh, $30,000 Yes, he was role. actually paid $30,000. Okay. And he said that the money was transferred, $30,000, yeah. but he got it here in CDs. And okay. he said it was close to 100,000 right. Ghana CDs. Right. That's what he told the police today. Mm -hmm. And that um, there was truly a, a day that they had to go withdraw some amount, almost 37000 okay. to purchase that car that was supposed to use mm -hmm. to be used as a taxi okay. uh, so that the proceeds would be given to the young man. And okay. later he was told by one of the handlers who is called Kabnasa, yeah. that the car was involved in an accident right. so basically the issue is with the police and uh, on Monday we are all to return and what's going to happen on Monday is that he's going to give the police a statement to scrutinize right. and also then uh, we are expecting the other suspect who is Kobna Sam to also come okay. testify or write his statement right then we know the way forward so right. progress is being made on this case oh, and I'm sure great. by yes great. I'm sure Good by Monday to and today today the family that he, he told us that he never had showed up. I think that one of the things that happened, per mm -hmm. what the discussions they're having, is that they told the young man that, look, if we give you this money, your family will take it from you. Mm -hmm. So he believed that they were the right people to keep the money right. for him. And unfortunately, that's what is happening. So on Monday, we'll get to know how that money was spent right. or was uh, uh, withdrawn. I think it will be interesting to also find out what's the state of the car. I mean, it's an allegation. Exactly. So the one who, in an owns the, who has the car, yes. because the young man striker never saw that car, they claimed they bought for him. Wow. So the one who had the car in his custody, yeah. who is the Kabna Sam, yeah. who has also been invited, okay. who is showing up on Monday or Tuesday okay. to write his statement. Right. Come the 20th of August this year um, at the Crime International Conference Center, 55 uh, women from across the world, including Ghana, will be competing for the coveted crown or becoming Miss Heritage Global 2019. As for us here in Ghana, as part of our year of return, we are engaging in this activity. We're going to be having a very good detail about uh, this contest and uh, what to expect. We don't know what the crown comes with. Does it come with a car as the norm here in Ghana? Or do these people become ambassadors for Ghana even though they are not from Ghana? We get to find out from the organizers and the Ghana Tourism Authority boss as well. So come along with me.
All right, so we are speaking to Mosite, who is the brand manager for uh, Miss Heritage Global. And there's been a lot of talk about this. We are, first of all, we are happy that it's coming to Ghana. Yes, mm. we are very happy it's coming to Ghana too. I mean, it's Ghana. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be here, so we want to be here too. Mm. And it didn't take you much to get us to accept this, right? No, not really. <laughs> well, because um, um, it's part of the year of return. They, the country is on a very big drive to uh, get as many people to come to Ghana as you heard. So it just made sense. It was a perfect fit that we would be bringing all these people from all around the world because the contestants don't just come alone. They actually come with a delegation of people who are also looking to do business in the country. So it's, it's such a great business opportunity as well. It's not just a beauty pageant. There's lots of opportunities to network work, especially because Ghana has so many local brands, you know, so it's also an opportunity for local brands to be able to allow the girls to experience the brands and be able to go and sell those brands to the countries they come from. Now, did we have to pay to have a franchise to do this? Yes, you have to pay to have a franchise to do this in certain countries. But in other countries, we work in tangent with the tourism department like we do here. So because heritage is tied so strongly to, to, to tourism, um, usually we allow the Miss Tourism. Most countries have a Miss Tourism representing. So it's the Miss Tourism that comes to represent at so, Miss so Heritage. For, for us, we had we had a free yes. a free <laughs> ticket to organize yes. this. Now um, let's talk about what it is it's in for whoever becomes winner. First off, before you even talk about that, I see that some of these people are not queens from their countries. Did you have to organize country by country to get queens all to come together? How did you come across these ladies? Okay, so again through the Department of Tourism, most of the tourism departments do host a Miss Tourism beauty pageant, so they do send a representative whoever wins and then for countries that don't have a Miss Tourism they're the ones who get the franchise and they'll run their own Miss Heritage pageant locally within their countries and then the winner of that comes through and then the countries where they can't host their own they just send somebody that they believe would represent their culture very well. Okay, okay. so that's why I see some people don't have the crown on and all that. So for, for this pageantry that's coming to Ghana, what is in for the winner? For the winner, the prize, we can't announce it just yet because we have to keep it under wraps until the girls get here, but it's a very big prize and some of it actually has something to do with Ghana, something very special that they can take with them that mm. will represent Ghana wherever I'm they go. because most of the time these people tend to be ambassadors for the country and now that you're bringing them to our country, I'm trying to wonder if, or I'm wondering if they automatically will become ambassadors for our country. Oh, definitely. I mean, that's why we do a 10-day experience. It's not just that they come in and come and just do a pageant they come and spend 10 days and in that 10 days they're experiencing the culture they're using the soap the black soap mm -hmm. they're using the sheer butter love I love mm -hmm. the black soap mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. it's amazing mm -hmm. so we want them to be able to experience all of that and take it home so they definitely will become ambassadors for Ghana final question before you go is that an elimination process or we see all 55 of them on stage on that day or there's going to be an elimination process you will see all 55 of them on stage that day and it's not just going to be a girls walking a ramp it's going to be a blend of fashion and music so that it's it's a big cultural show we don't even like to think of it as a beauty pageant anymore because we don't usually we don't follow the normal format it's, it's a format that's about celebrating and exhibiting the world's cultures and bringing it all together to show as our brand says the unity in our diversity Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Tourism Authority, Akwesi Ajiman, says this initiative would put Ghana on the map. And I hear that we didn't have to pay anything for this. Yeah, we didn't have to. I think um, this was one where the organizers were very definite that they wanted Ghana to host. Uh, we told them initially that we had a full calendar of activities for the year of return, but they said the year of return for what Ghana stands for and what you're doing, we will offer to you for free. And so we were quite excited when we looked at the profile, we looked at the past events and uh, it looked good. And so we've been working with them on how we can use it to project the cultural values of Africa and also Ghana. And so far I'll say so good. I mean, they've come through with their word when they said initially they will have about 40 participants. I was a bit skeptical. Um, but now they have 55 and counting. If we allow them, they will bring in more. Um, but the logistics of moving people around, uh, transportation and all those things are things that we need to arrange professionally and make sure that we are giving a very 
good impression about Ghana to the outside world. And so we're very careful with uh, the planning of it, how we work with them as a team. They have the legacy of having done this in Zimbabwe and South Africa. This is a different terrain. This is Ghana, center of the world. We have our own ways of doing things. The cultural way of receiving people should be different. And the differentiators are what we are looking for. And uh, talking about the bedding that lies uh, with logistics and moving people around, is, is, that, is that going to be on us as a, the Year of Return Committee, as a Ghana Tourism Authority and all that? Yeah, it's, that one definitely is on us. I mean, we have to arrange um, local transport, get them to the various sites, um, health facilities, be on, be on standby. We've had incidents where people travel and they fall sick and all that. This is a global event, so we want to make sure that we cross all the T's and dot all the I's. So the local logistics are on us, but it's not something that is outside our remit. I mean, having such an event with all the media that follows it. I mean, locally we have the multimedia and we know because of that everybody in Ghana will get to know about it. And so definitely it is important that we put our best foot forward. And if it is that we have to make sure logistics are in place, we have to make sure transportation is top notch, we have to make sure that the food they eat, everything is um, to the standard that Ghana is noted for, then that is what we will ensure is done. Finally, for a layman who might not understand the the um, the metrics, how do we say how does Ghana even benefit in all of this? I mean, when it comes to tourism, tourism is all about marketing and media. You want country you want people to visit your country you want your country to be top of mind the only way they will remember Ghana is oh uh, this Japan ambassador was there I know her I saw her so country is something that for me is number one priority for us let's get our name out there the whole issue of the year of return and putting Ghana on the map is just about the mileage that we can get and so far we've gotten that mileage locally all the media houses are talking about it internationally all the major broadcasting networks cnn bbc al jazeera fox everybody is talking about ghana the year of return it's not something that comes cheap i mean so for us to be able to generate all that media from our little resources from the strategy that we have adopted is good these girls are going to come. They are ambassadors of their country. They are going to, most of them are on social media. They are going to tweet. They are going to blog. They are going to send messages. Back home, people will start talking about Ghana. They are going to show pictures of our heritage sites. People are going to know about country. People are going to start thinking, is that a country I want to visit? Aside that when they come in, they will stay in hotels. Some hotels will benefit. They will shop. Some people will benefit. They will go to... Um, transport some of them on their own so if you look at the whole value chain of tourism when we have host events that is what the benefit is to the country the private sector taking advantage of the opportunity fashion designers uh, clothing lines uh, seamstresses the hair designers hairdressers and all those taking advantage of the opportunity is what for us excites us as a national brand we believe this will put Ghana on the map as part of a uh a bigger um, response, a global response to the call by His Excellency the President asking the world to visit Ghana as part of, part of this year's um, celebration of the year of return, 400th year of the enslavement of the first black um, Africans. We have seen tremendous responses coming from across the world. Indeed, um, throughout the year, starting from sometime last year, actually, we've had the opportunity to host some very dynamic and influential groups and individuals coming into Ghana. Famous amongst these were the full circle event that took place that brought us the likes of Boris Kujo, just to mention a few. Um, we saw the likes of Idris Elba coming through the shores of this country. We hosted them beautifully. As the year proceeded, we've had the opportunity to host um, the Tina Festival that actually be started the year of return activities. The famous Ghanaian who is currently the world champion for WWE, Kofi Kingston, as part of the response, found his way to Ghana. And we are happy, therefore, to hear Miss Heritage Global respond to the same call and to realize the importance of hosting this year's event at 
the shores of this beautiful country, Ghana, where we celebrate warmth, we celebrate culture like none other. Indeed, we have come to pride ourselves in the fact that we are the epitome of what you would define as culture and tradition. There is none that is comparable to any, at least on the African continent and elsewhere I've seen, the way we do it. And so it is appropriate to have the event hosted here in Ghana. 55 countries, as we have been told, 20 coming from this continent. Um, I, I think it's appropriate to put a threat here, host and win. Yeah. And if we don't, Nuzite, you will be sure you are not leaving this country. We will find a way to keep your passport as well. But that puts a, a huge responsibility on the Ghanaian representative, Eugenia, who is going to contest and carry high the flag of Ghana. We wish you well, and we know you will make us proud. Over the months, throughout the year, the Ghana Tourism Authority, working together with uh, mother partners, under the guidance of the Ministry of Arts and the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, has aggressively sought to market Ghana and to put Ghana on the international map for good reason. It's not just about the year of return, but to let people know Ghana is the place to be, Ghana is a place to come to, Ghana is a good holiday destination, it's a destination for business, for sports, everything um, touristic, medical included. And so we have seen steadily the response to these activities in terms of advertising, whether it was on CNN or Al Jazeera or on international um, websites, um, on BBC, all the activities that were done, we have seen some very good response. And this has been demonstrated through the traffic we have seen coming into Ghana inbound. It has grown by something in excess of 25 to 30 percent, and that's for us, it's very significant. The reflection of this number you will see not just coming through airports, but they are showing up in hotels, they are eating Ghanaian food and cuisine, they are wearing Ghanaian clothes, they are patronizing Ghanaian artifacts and arts. And that is what we have sought to achieve um, as an industry um, leader and working directly for government. And so that's one of the things we are also proud about, to try and get the world's attention to come to Ghana. Beyond that, there are specific efforts by the government of the day to try and position Ghana as a proper mice destination. And so whilst we embark on these marketing-led activities and events, we also have sought to invest where the need is. And so there are plans as we speak, and for those of you who have heard about Marine Drive, you have heard about the activities that are engineering at the Trade Fair Center to have a proper convention center that will be able to host events that will seat conferences of 10,000, excess of 20,000, because we need infrastructure. His Excellency um, led the country to put in a bid to host the Continental um, Free Trade African Agreement, and actually to get the headquarters located in Ghana. We're happy to say Ghana has been chosen, and having won, that is an opportunity for us as a country to further put Ghana on the map. And so it means that we've got to pay attention to the kind of infrastructure we have in the country to increase our beds in terms of hotel occupancy, to provide more restaurants. And that's opportunity for all of us to do business and to expand ourselves in the areas that we find ourselves working in the tourism um, ecosystem. And so as we work on some of these investments, like the Tema Project, the center of the world, where we are hosting a golf tournament this Saturday and seek to put in um, a proper resort we have our eyes on the fact that we need to invest in our infrastructure. There have been improvements specifically in our visa acquisition regimes, and this has sought to also make it easy for people to come into the country and to enjoy that which we sell um, to the world. As most of you know, Multimedia Group has existed in this country for over 20 years, and um, it's been a great journey. When it comes to heritage and media, we can claim we can make a claim. And so supporting heritage being celebrated in Ghana in August and prior to that is something that we're proud to be associated with. Um, multimedia group, um, Joy Prime, and we keep opening our doors to great partnerships in this country. If you know, then you know that when it comes to if the event has steam and uh, it has prominence and it has integrity, then we are part of it. And then we want to throw our lights on such an event 
so that all the great things around it will be projected for all to see. And as far as the media is concerned, the multimedia group is concerned, it's prime for us as well. So once we got the um, invitation to partner um, this event, uh, it was really a noble cause that we're proud of. And thank you to the organizers, um, the Miss Heritage Global Foundation, um, sorry, organization, um, as well as all the noble men seated here. In terms of promotion, Ghana is going to hear and see um, Miss Heritage Global. We're going to put all our business units behind um, this um, event. We're going to have TV represented or led by Joy Prime. Uh, we're going to have Joy News. We're going to have Adum TV all promoting the event on radio in Accra. As you know, we have four radio stations in Accra. Um, we have Joy FM, Asempa, Adum FM, and XFM all going to promote it. We have our social media um, also promoting. Um, we are going to have my job online also contributing with stories. Um, we're going to have photographs and galleries created to promote this event. Um, in terms of materials that we're contributing, we'll be having the videos, we'll be having the, the jingles, the, the flyers, everything being done to promote. And this is in huge um, value of Ghana cities, which the multimedia group is willing to throw behind and su support this course. And especially when we have our own Miss Heritage Ghana um, being part of the event. And let's all cheer for her. And at the end of the day, we'll keep opening our doors to such esteemed and great partnerships. Thank you. So Eugene Abochi is the one representing us for the Miss Heritage Global this year on the 20th. And uh, I'm sure you're excited about this. Yes, I'm super excited. Um, this is the first time I get to compete with 54 other women. And the number is, um, let's say, quite huge. And I'm so excited to be able to know them, to be able to sell Ghana to them. And I'm sure that if I sell Ghana very well, when they go to their countries, they would also want to tell other people about that beautiful experience they had when they came to Ghana and of course the numbers will keep increasing and our hotels are in the food industries all of them will get all the purchases that are necessary and needed. Do you think that there's a lot of pressure on you because of course they keep saying host and win, host and win. Yes um, definitely there is um, that pressure but um, I've uh, should I say grown myself in a way that I can handle pressure and it is natural because representing a country of over 30 million people is definitely something they are all like entrusting let's say their um, will or whatever I should put it into me they are expecting that I will do well and that in its own is a little bit of pressure but I'm confident because Ghana stands out when it comes to culture and heritage, and I'm putting all my confidence in the Ghanaian culture, and I know that is what is going to make me stand out. Definitely. Did you have to contest something before you got here, or you just picked to come to this? Oh, exactly. I had to contest. Um, last year, 2018, I participated in Miss, Her uh, Miss Tourism Ghana, and Miss Tourism Ghana apparently has the franchise of Miss Heritage Global. So, so the winner automatically yes, contests. The, the winner actually goes to Miss tourism world, then the first run-up goes to Miss International, then that way. So there are other franchises under the Miss Tourism um, organization. So which of the, which of the um, positions did you have? I got to top five. Okay. I got to top five, so yes. You picked from the top five to come contest exactly. for Exactly. You're lucky. Congratulations. Thank you. you.